everybody. Jake Newton, CPPS, cpps.com. Today's video is all about travel risk management uh, and in particular, why you should have a direct relationship with your assistance provider. Um, If you're not familiar with what an assistance provider is, effectively, they're the organization that helps support uh, an insurance policy, travel insurance, or uh, they are also a standalone entity that helps with different issues and planning concepts that come up for travel around the globe. So if you have a medical issue, if you have a security issue, you need to be evacuated, you need to have somebody else evacuated, you need to find a hospital, you need to get a new pair of glasses, uh, or you lost your luggage, all kinds of different things they, they offer support for. Um, but there's a couple different ways that you can have a relationship with them. Uh, a lot of times they can be embedded within an insurance policy, uh, or as an organization, you can also, of course, be uh, dedicated or have a relationship, a dedicated relationship with them. And so I want to talk to you about three things uh, that you should include or consider as part of uh, why you should have a di- direct relationship with an assistance provider and how it can benefit your travel risk management program. So number one has to do with an advisory capacity. Um, When you have a direct relationship with your assistance provider, uh, one of the things that they can do, for example, is notify you that you have a case or somebody had to go to the hospital or had a medical issue, whatever it is. If you only have an insurance policy, um, if an individual has to use it or goes to the hospital, unless they say something, uh, you may not find out about the issue. So if they uh, start utilizing the policy or call in to get the services or call in to get payment under the policy, whatever it is. Well, with a dedicated relationship with the assistance provider, they can then back channel call you, the organization sponsoring the travel to let you know that there is a case or there is something going on. The other part of that is also to provide you updates throughout that case, kind of the case management uh, throughout the process and giving you updates how things are progressing, uh, giving you whether it's from a medical professional or a security professional, giving you different updates and uh, advisory kind of uh, information to help you better make decisions on what you might do going forward. So a lot of different advisory capacity that you have access to. Uh, A second piece of this is um, the ability to reach out proactively for advice effectively. Um, So you have the ability to contact these folks and let's just say that um, you do have somebody in in a situation or you do have an issue going on. Well, rather than just um, trying to figure things out on your own, there are resources there that are available for you. And um, you can reach out if you either see something come up in the news or if something is unraveling, you can reach out to their experts, whether it's a doctor uh, a security professional, um, maybe you have a dedicated account manager as part of it, you can reach out to them and, and get some of that information on how to best move forward with the different issue at hand. And so it's it's very proactive in nature rather than being reactive, if you will, of having just the insurance policy there to pay for things on the back end. It makes it more of a two-way relationship where you can reach out, but they might also contact you under certain protocols that you can establish. The third one is uh, a concept of delegated authority. So this kind of goes a couple different ways. Um, Sometimes when you have a relationship with an assistance provider, it can be uh, accompanied with insurance or it may not be. Um, Some organizations decide to pay for uh, expenses out of pocket, for example. Um, But delegated authority kind of does two different things. One, it gives the assistance provider to effectively spend a certain amount of money with an insurance policy that you have without getting further approvals and coordinating benefits. So it has an opportunity to really quicken the amount of time uh, that is needed to get support for a traveler. Um, And the other side of it is maybe you are paying out of pocket or maybe there's something that's not necessarily covered within your, your program that you've signed up for. Well, you can also give your assistance provider, in some cases, delegated authority as well, 
to say, you know, you can spend up to X amount of dollars on our behalf without even having to give us a phone call uh, based on the, the situation at hand. So um, three different things there. This may or may not be available at uh, the assistance provider that you're using. So you'd have to kind of find that out or look at the different ones, what, what each offers and how each can basically benefit your travel program. They're all a little bit different and there's a lot of great ones out there. Um, but those are three things that can basically be a quality reason to have that dedicated access and dedicated relationship with an assistance provider running front, running primary, rather than just having an insurance policy that's there to kind of contain some costs throughout the, throughout the travel process. So hopefully you found that a little bit helpful. Uh, of course, this is, um, you know, uh, part of our, our larger video series and capabilities that we do about these different topics. So we'd appreciate your comments below. You know, what are things would you like us to be doing videos about? But otherwise, this is CPPS signing off until next time. Thanks.